Kira. And you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. <laughs> few days ago he said that you told him that you weren't really asking for for tough fights and there was interviews that came out like a year ago that that said like you know you were never personally asking for x y and z did you ever go to espinoza or floyd or leonard and ask to fight the likes of lomachenko or devin haney i just said it on the interview that i didn't i didn't ask for none of them guys i didn't if it was if it, i never asked for not one opponent not one i still don't ask for opponent would you be open to fighting Devin sense. Haney in 2023? Of course he'd be open to fighting Devin Haney. Come on. You're not a, come on. He's a WBA regular champion, so, you know, if he wanted that fight. Yeah, bro. You know how it goes. You know, right, how, you, you know how people come out and say they want to fight somebody? I mean, they say, all right, I'll fight them. Them guys are sitting there on Twitter and, 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 and y'all run with them. They, they, if they mean it, send a, send a contract. Do that. Send a contract. You could have the WBA order that fight. Devin Haney's the super champion. You're the regular champion. They could order well, the fight. Well, tell them to do it. Tell them to do it, bro. Tell look, them to look, do look, it. Why are you talking to me about it? Bro, bro, tell them to do it, bro. Dante's Boxing Nation. What's going on, guys? So that was Javante Tank Davis talking on a podcast, uh, Chicken Talk, where, as you guys can see, a caller was asking Javante some real questions. We heard Javante reiterate that he had never asked to fight any of those guys from Lomachenko to Devin Haney. He said he never asked for anyone when it comes to him being with uh, Leonard Ellerby or Mayweather Promotions. But that's not 100% true because we know that Javante Tank Davis, he's always asked for the Ryan Garcia fight. And he also called out Manny Pacquiao after Manny Pacquiao beat Keith Thurman. I mean, there was a time when Javante Tank Davis, he wanted the Ryan Garcia fight so bad that he even said, I don't even care about being the A side or B side. I just want to knock him out. Listen, guys. I truly feel that if Javante gets past both Garcias, Hector and Ryan, Devin Haney gets past Lomachenko, and Shakur Stevenson gets past whoever has the balls to get in the ring with him, because right now he seems to be the most avoided fighter in the sport, Davis is going to fight one of them, either the end of 2023 or the first quarter of 2024. Why? Because that fight will be the most demanded fight in the sport of boxing by that time. Unless another great hope emerges and old media starts pushing him and comparing him to Floyd Mayweather and Muhammad Ali like they did with Lomachenko. Assuming that there are no more fighters on the hope list, that old media is pushing all the way to the top, we're almost guaranteed to see Davis against either Shakur or Devin Haney. I think we might end up getting a Davis-Shakur fight before we get a Davis-Devin Haney fight because once Devin Haney fights Lomachenko, he's most likely moving up to 140. And the fact that Davis insists on fighting Javante or Ryan Garcia, he insists on fighting him at 136, a catch weight, it sounds like he's not ready to move up to 140 yet. And we know Shakur just moved up to 135. So it seems like that fight would most likely materialize before a Devin Haney fight would. Now, going back to that clip that I played for you guys, if you notice, the caller, he made a lot of great points. He said to uh, Javante Tank Davis, you're the regular WBA champion. You can order the fight. Javante is basically Devin Haney's mandatory right now, which is why I don't understand why Javante is saying, tell them to send me a contract. You know, if they want to fight me, tell them to send a contract. Why are you talking to me? You should be telling them to send me a contract. Javante had never told Ryan Garcia or Manny Pacquiao or any of his opponents to send him a contract. So I don't understand why he says that when it comes to a Devin Haney or Shakur Stevenson. Not to mention, there's a very good chance that Javante Tank Davis will be the A-side. And we all know only the A-side sends out contracts. B-sides don't send out contracts. Now, the B-side can have his promoter reach out to Javante or whoever the opponent is, but they don't send out contracts. All of Javante Tank Davis's opponents, they were offered a fight with Davis. Javante, he works with Al Heyman, and he said he's never asked for any of the opponents. But I've heard a lot of boxers that work with Al Heyman, they say that Al Heyman is an advisor. What Al Heyman usually does is he'll send a fighter a couple of opponents to choose from and ask them, which one do you prefer? 
Now, I don't know, maybe it's different with Javante's relationship with Al Heyman, but I've heard a lot of fighters say this, this is usually how Al Heyman operates. We know that when it came to Errol Spence, he had made it very clear after the Ugas fight, the only fight he wanted was Terrence Crawford. He said he didn't want anyone else but Terrence Crawford. And once again, these fighters all work with Al Heyman. I recall Floyd Mayweather saying when he first started working with Al Heyman years ago, he said Al Heyman asked him, what is the main thing you want me to do for you? Floyd Mayweather said, I want you to make the Manny Pacquiao fight. And shortly after that, the Manny Pacquiao fight was made. I truly believe this Ryan Garcia fight got made because Javante Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia, they both wanted it so bad. And sometime next year, I truly believe that's when Javante Tank Davis is going to tell Al Heyman, I want either Shakur or Devin because those fights are going to be in popular demand. People are already bringing up Haney's name and Shakur's name in almost every interview that Davis does. Well, I can guarantee you guys, a year from now, it is gonna be much worse. Those names are most likely gonna be the only names that's going to be mentioned whenever Davis does an interview. And the same thing for Devin Haney and Shakur. They're always gonna be asked when they're gonna be fighting one of the two. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODeKey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram. Let me tell you guys about Issa Israel Law Firm. It is a full-service legal practice based in Denver, Colorado, an emerging hub for combat sports and high-altitude training. If you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you, visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs or defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com. My name is Chris and I'm all the way here from Anchorage, Alaska at South Carolinas and I'm here for my second treatment of SMP. Well, I was sitting at home one day and uh, going over my Facebook page and they have different, you know, like advertisements popping up and I saw one for SMP and I saw some pictures of some guys, you know, a before and after and I was looking at that and, it, you know, it caught my attention so I Googled it. SMP, nothing showed up in my area. So, uh, you know, I did a little more research and all of a sudden, Scout Carolinas popped up in the web browser. So I started uh, watching his videos and uh, seeing all the reaction from all the other people. We talked on the phone, we made appointments and everything. I sent him pictures and uh, uh, he looked at them and I was like, can you fix this? And, uh, you know, he pretty much said, no problem. My first session, uh, he made me feel extremely comfortable. Uh, it was almost like I was talking to family. He started and uh, during the whole, the whole treatment, we talked and, you know, about our families and our life and, you know, and things that he does and things that I do. And before I know it, the first session was over. When you see someone doing something that they love, uh, as much as I see Enoch Glover love what he does, uh, it shows in his work. I wouldn't point anyone in any other direction but here to North Carolina, Scout Carolinas, to get this done.